everybody. How y'all doing? Uh, my name is Dr. Samori Swaggart. And, and today I'm joined with Howard County Council candidate, Opal T. Jones. And we're going to be here. We're going to discuss uh, some of his platform and ideas uh, of what he feels he can add and contribute to uh, Howard County, Maryland. How you doing today, Opal? Good to see you, brother. All right. So uh, just off the break, just tell people briefly a little bit about yourself. Sure. So uh, as I'm a, I'm a resident of Howard County, um, as you see, I'm running for Howard County Council. My background is in education, mathematics, and, and statistics. Mm -hmm. I'm a family man. I have a beautiful wife and two boys I'm proud of, and I'm just trying to make a difference in the community. All right. All right. Great. So as you're, you're a busy man, I know uh, we probably might have to keep this brief, but we're, we're going to tackle some good issues. So out the gate, um, you're running for Howard, Co Howard County Council. Uh, can you briefly describe uh, the county for the viewers that are not familiar with uh, Howard County, like, you know, population size or any statistics, school rankings and things like that? Sure. Well, first off, ge geographically, the county is nestled right in between Baltimore and D.C. Um, it may be considered a Baltimore suburbs, but um, the evolution of Columbia and the county all the development that has happened over the past 50 years has really made it a wonderful place to live, a great place to raise a family, um, one of the top school systems in the state, if not in the country, and just a great place to be with all the amenities and the greenery. Um, it's just an amazing place. I love it there, um, and I definitely want to give back to Howard County residents. Um, Statistics-wise, there's about 300,000 residents, 200,000 of which are voting age, which is important to me. Uh, but so that's two thirds. So that lets you know there's about 100,000 kids um, that are in the communities and education, whether they go to public school or private school, whether they take advantage of our amazing uh, parks and recs and, and just doing some great things in the community. Um, but, but other than that, it's a great place to be. And I look forward to serving the community in that regard. All right. Great. Great. OK. Um, give me a few specific corrections that you would like to see or upgrades or, you know, just some changes that you see that you can add to uh, Howard County? Well, as any place has, may have its faults, I love Howard County. Um, three of my main pillars in my campaign are education, uh, public and personal safety, as well as community vibrancy. Education-wise, the only thing that I would love to see is that the underrepresented groups could close in on that achievement gap. Um, but that's not just immune to Howard County. That's everywhere. Um, being an educator and being a um, having grown up in schools that are ranked way lower than Howard County, gr having grown up in Brooklyn and Queens, um, as well as going to Prince George's County Schools, I turned out just fine. Um, an African-American young man in the community doing, thing, doing wonderful things at Hampton University. Um, I have a graduate degree from Howard University, mm -hmm. working on the second graduate degree in dissertation phase. Um, mm -hmm. I went to schools that would be ranked way lower than any Howard County school. Mm -hmm. So uh, when I hear things about Howard County schools and this should be better, I want to correct more, more or less the, the folklore that goes in behind schools that may be ranked at the bottom mm -hmm. in the county and let everyone know that no matter where you are in Howard County, no matter what school you go to, that you have a chance to achieve and thrive and, and learn from some of the best teachers in the country. Um, so that's one thing I would want correct. All right. Wow. Sounds good. Sounds good. Sounds good. All right. So, um, if you could, I want you to mentally paint and describe what the picture of Howard County would look like during and after your term. Okay. Uh, so during my term, so let me, let me give you some background. There's mm -hmm. five districts, five council manic districts, mm -hmm. um, four of which are term limited. So the county council is going to have an entirely new face, an entirely new makeup come 2018. Only uh, one county councilman is running as an incumbent mm -hmm. um, and I'm sure he'll do just fine he, right. he's, he's a great gentleman uh, but it's gonna be four rookies if you will okay. so we have a chance to create a new face and create a new environment while keeping some of the same traditions that have made Howard County great so during my tenure as, as a Howard County councilman I would love to just continue those programs um, like I said earlier education public and personal safety and community vibrancy is really really big to me um, having two boys, one of which is two and who will be attending kindergarten in three years. Um, I just think that being able to um, get engaged with the community and understand what's really going on to be able to help them and 
take them to the next level as we go to 2020. Um, so my term would be from 2018 to 2022, mm -hmm. and you know I'm up. The, the term limits are three terms, so the most you can run is for 12 years. Okay. Um, so so let's say 2022 or even further, I could just see Howard County um, getting involved in some great development programs, which is already happening, trying to keep redistricting at a minimum. Yes. Which is a which is an amazingly hot topic with very hot. when I'm knocking doors and I'm talking to the community, even some of my very own neighbors, um, they're very concerned about their, um, their kids going to a school um, that's further away or not in their district and being separated from their friends. Yes. So um, taking a look at public facilities and, and just continuing the great things that's going on and just keep, keep Howard County going up. Onward and upward. All right. That's it. All right. Um, let me ask this question. Sure. Uh, if I just moved to Howard County as a new homeowner, right, why would I vote for Opal T. Jones and what could I expect? Well, as a new homeowner, um, especially if you have kids, well, let's talk about owning a home. Mm -hmm. When you own a home in the county and you pay taxes, okay, um, over, I think it's about 62 cents on the dollar. I think my numbers are correct. The 61 or 62 cents on the dollar goes towards education. So whether you have kids or not, it's very important that the school system stays one of the top in the state. Um, certain rankings have it at number three out of 24. Certain rankings have it at, at, at four or five out of 24. But basically, it's one of the top school districts in the state of Maryland, if not in the country. Um, as a homeowner, that's very, very important to your property value. Yes. Um, so even though we, we, we do pay taxes and, and the taxes are, 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 are may, may be relatively high, it's for a good cause. Yes. The property value is shooting up, and I'm all about that. I would try to just want to continue um, the wonderful things that's happening there with that. Additionally, um, making sure that the property value continues to rise and that we have desirable neighbors, a diverse neighborhood, mm -hmm. people that care about the community mm -hmm. and care about our school system because all of it is intertwined. Mm -hmm. So that's why you should vote for me. Now, <laughs> now, 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 now let me say this. I'm mm -hmm. running in the second district, second council manic district, mm -hmm. um, which is roughly a fifth um, of the county. And though I would only be only district two voters can vote for me once getting on the county council you serve the entire county oh okay similar to a senator from maryland or a congresswoman from dc right you know they they, they may have some hand in what happens nationally got you got you all right um this uh this is important as you talk about education and how uh having good schools in a neighborhood or a county, how they keep the property value up and, and things of that nature. Uh, you've been extensively and intricately involved in uh, STEM program development and exercises. Uh, what is your plan and vision for education specifically? So education is my number one thing. I've uh, been in education. My mom was my first teacher. She's <laughs> been a teacher her whole life. Um, um, I love education. Um, specifically, getting involved and getting into the trenches of what's going on, not only in the school day, but before school and at home. Yes. Starting the day with a wonderful breakfast. Starting the day with nutrition to feed your brain to learn. Mm -hmm. Having the opportunities to study, get tutoring, attend programs that prepare you for SAT prep, PSAT, going to college, um, whether you're going straight to the military, um, knowing about these ROTC programs, ASVAP, things of that nature. Um, my fraternity, Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated, mm -hmm. we have one of the uh, best programs, which was regionally and nationally recognized, called the Alpha Achievers Program. And it is in all 12 of the high schools in Howard County. Uh, we also just broke into a couple of the middle schools as well. Mm -hmm. And that program is called High Achievers, where these young men uh, with a 3.0 or above GPA and do some community service, they are able to get help and be able to be mentors to their peers in the school system. Those types of programs, having it expand out to not only 3.0 and above, but to all Howard County students so that the education, again, is number one in my book, that the education springboards everyone for it. Got you. All right. Um, let's do this. We just saw a historical eight-year administration uh, depart the White House. Uh, we saw a tumultuous election cycle. 
Uh, tell us some things that you've learned politically from watching this past campaign season uh, from the Obama administration. Wow. Um, I don't know if I have enough time to uh, get into <laughs> what I learned from Obama and what's happening now as recently as yesterday with um, some of the rhetoric that's coming from, from, from our dear president. But I will say this. Mm -hmm. President Barack Obama inspired so many. Mm -hmm. He and his wife, Michelle, were just, a, I mean, it's just an amazing thing to see not only the first African-American um, family in the White House, but the wonderful programs that they both did and the, thing, and the inspiration that they gave to not just America, but to the world. Yes. Ironically, I announced my candidacy on January 19th. 2017, which was the last day of Barack Obama's presidency, to pay homage to and pay tribute to someone who paved the way for little old me in Howard County, Maryland, to run for a local office called mm -hmm. County Council. Um, what I learned politically was, as Michelle Obama said, when they go low, we must go high. Mm -hmm. It's always important to keep your head up. It's always important to do the right thing, even when there are forces grabbing at you that may want to sway you off, off, off course. Mm -hmm. And just to give back, because when you give back, you give yourself the blessing. Okay. Um, now, you're running for uh, county council. Mm -hmm. uh, people that are watching this, may not necessarily know the roles and responsibilities. Uh, can you articulate the duties, responsibilities, and obligations of the office that you're campaigning for? Sure. Well, county council person um, varies, you know, it, it varies a lot around the country, e even in the state of Maryland, Baltimore City, Montgomery County, Prince George County, and Howard County. Um, all, all the counties may vary, but in a nutshell, county council approves the laws. Mm -hmm. uh, in Howard County, they also sit on the zoning board. Uh, which deals with zoning, and the liquor board, which deals with any um, licensure issues, giving license or a revoking license, um, appropriating budgets. So that's big, again, education, 62 yes. cents on the dollar, yes. appro appropriating those in a timely manner, um, as well as the library system, um, community colleges, the community college in Howard County. Um, so there's wonderful things that county council does. They sit through biweekly uh, Monday night meetings, which can go anywhere from seven to nine or from seven to midnight. I have testified <laughs> and have been witness to um, these meetings that go into the wee hours in the morning. So um, my hat's off to all the county council persons from all five districts in Howard County. Um, so in a nutshell, that's what they do. Oh, constituent wise, they listen to the community, mm -hmm. all right? What's going on on your street? What's going on in the street um, across from you in the, in, in the neighborhood? They make sure that the voice is being heard from their neighbors, from the constituents, and bring that back to be able to look at writing bills, approving certain things, amending other laws, making sure that as much people, I'm not gonna say everyone, but as many people as possible right. are happy and, and um, satisfied by living in Howard County. All right, good, good. So it sounds like you uh, know what you're up against. Oh yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> definitely. All right. Uh, now, you're doing all this and it is definitely a good thing. But some people like to say, like, well, you know, experience, experience is a, is a big thing. Uh, you know, how's he vetted? But can you tell the audience about the many social, civic, and community and volunteer programs that you are and have uh, actively participated in? Sure. Um, I could start with college. Um, in college, I, I pledged Alpha Phi Alpha, and I've been an active member, and I'm currently a life member, mm -hmm. going on almost 20 years. Um, I was also involved in a very intricate program, one of the best programs on campus at Hampton University, called the Student Leadership Program, uh, where we were actively engaged in our communities and um, giving back and making sure freshmen knew where they were going and things of that nature. Um, going through grad school and being involved in the community, staying active in my frat, um, getting appointed to the Human Rights Commission by mm -hmm. our previous county executive, um, Ken Ullman. Mm -hmm. um, so I've served on the Howard on Howard County Human Rights Commission uh, for three years now, wherein we see cases dealing with housing discrimination, age and sex discrimination, um, primarily if someone doesn't have like the money or the, the wherewithal to get a lawyer or afford a lawyer, um, and a case may come in front of us yes. to be able to uh, look at the Office of Human Rights, does their thing first, and then we take a look at it. So being appointed to that board um, definitely helped me in my, in my servitude. And yes, this is my first time running for a public office, mm -hmm. but with, with the uh, many many things I've been involved in and giving back to the community, I think this is just an extension of that. So being active in uh, my FRAD, NAACP, 
um, tutoring, mentoring the community and having two boys, I see what I would want in a county council person. Mm -hmm. And the opportunity came. I think it's the right time. My wife gave me her blessing, uh, <laughs> which is very, very important. Yes. yes so yes. Uh, so I, I, think, I think this is a good time. And, and I just want to give back to the community in this regard. All right. Uh, we're winding down. Uh, just have a few quick ones for you. Um, this presidential election had many people feeling like they were choosing the lesser of two evils. Mm -hmm. uh, many people grew disenchanted with the political system. Can you explain to people the importance of voting locally in county, city, and state elections? Sure. Um, it is extremely important, so, so important to not only check that box for president or uh, the gubernatorial elections, if it happens in the midterm elections, but all the way down ballot. We call it down ballot. So I would be running for a down ballot office. Most people think it's impo unimportant. My first time, first time I voted um, when I was 22, 21, 22, I think I just voted for the president and maybe one other. I, I just didn't know, right? right? So not only voting for those local offices are extremely important, getting involved by doing a quick Google search or going to maybe one or two hearings to find out what's going on locally. That's where some of the laws are being made, what's happening on your street. When a stoplight needs to be put up, when appropriations are happening budgetary-wise, um, fiduciary responsibilities, when redistricting is taking place in schools, it's not the President of the United States, right? Mm -hmm. It's not the Senator, mm -hmm. it's not the Governor, mm -hmm. it starts at the county that's or the city level. That's right. That's so right. people will see a pothole or something and they may you know, be upset at the state of Maryland or the President. No, that's happening extremely locally. You'd be surprised, your county council person may live a mile away mm -hmm. and you may not have any idea who they are. I'm knocking on doors and I would say mm, maybe a good two out of 10 doors I knock on, they have never heard of the county council position. Mm. Um, and it's somewhat surprising to me, but not so much so because people are inundated with life. Yes. You know, um, Howard County, like, like I said before, being nestled in between Baltimore and DC, we have a lot of transient folks, right? Mm -hmm. They go to Baltimore to go to work, they go to DC or Montgomery County in Northern Virginia, and they just come home and they live. And by the time they get home, they fight an hour and a half of traffic. They want to play with their kids, have, have a good meal, mm -hmm. and watch some TV and get ready to start the next day all over again. Right. So they may not be interested or have the time to find out what's going on locally. But that's where it's happening. Yes. So, so, so if there are some issues going on, more than likely, it may happen locally. So it's very important to find out what's going on, who's running, who do you want to represent you in your, I don't know, 10 square mile village or neighborhood yes because because that's where it's at very very important all right well when we're going to close it out um opal i want you to tell people where they can find you um any internet handles social media handles or how can they reach out to you your campaign i don't know if you're accepting uh, or allowed to do get contributions for to help your campaign but just let people know the information they need. Sure. Opaljones.com is a, is a one-stop one shop. O-P-E-L-J-O-N-E-S.com. Um, you can find me on Facebook at Friends of Opal Jones. Opal Jones for County Council. I'm on uh, Twitter. It's Opal Jones. Instagram is Opal Jones. My son got, my 13-year-old son got me on Instagram, uh, set up my Instagram account for Opal Jones. So you, you can just find me there. Um, I have campaign, everything I talked about here, some, some other things I have there. Um, and you can just click on the links to see what's going on. In the upper right hand corner, there's a button called Donate. Appreciate you clicking on that. Um, and you know, this is a very grassroots effort, right? Um, I would love to get a check for $6,000, but it'll be more important to me to reach 10 people who can give 10 bucks. Because then, even though it's only $100, I'm talking to them, I'm getting engaged with them. Maybe they want to come out and knock some doors with me, put a sign on their yard, um, stand at a polling location with me next June 26th and 2018, and figure out what's going on and how we can help the community. All right. Is any anything else you want to tell the people, or if you live in Howard County, um, come on out. You go to opaljones.com. Um, basically, just getting involved, right? Whether it's locally, whether you, if you're seniors and you live in Virginia or Nebraska, just get involved locally because that spans up all the way to the White House. Like I said earlier, knowing who you're voting for locally, noting knowing who your senators and your congressmen, city council, county council, aldermen, mayor, any of that. You got to get involved because it's going to happen regardless. These elections are happening regardless, and they're making decisions about our future yes. with respect to our kids, mm -hmm. about taxes, and about things that really, really matter. So get involved. And if you live in District 2, Howard County, I'd love to have you vote on June 26, 2018. 
All right. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, brother. I appreciate right. your time. Take care. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, Opal T. Jones. <laughs>